Well, we don't need Warren Buffett because it turns out we can print. Rates never rise. Inflation never goes up. We can print enough to do all of these deals. And that's exactly what you saw happen. And in fact, the Fed did so much that there weren't even takers for the money. The Main Street lending program that they tried, um, it's not even for Main Street, by the way. It was for businesses with, I think, 500 employees and up. Nobody even wanted the money. That's how much money was out there. Look at SPACs. Nobody needs capital for anything from uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Therefore, the premiums that they can command in order to dole out that capital are so low that it's almost not worth doing. So what game is he going to play? He's going to buy stocks at 25 times earnings. He doesn't want to do that either. So I think they're making some investments that look big, but they're really not in the scale of the company. Again, keep in mind the Berkshire mm -hmm. Securities portfolio, I think is like $250 billion. So they buy a little Chevron. They buy some Japanese trading banks. They do a little Verizon. These are not needle-moving investments. And I think people emotionally were disappointed that um, Mozart didn't, you know, drop a, 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 a new symphony to blow us all away during this last crisis. The other thing, though, Scott, I think, is that it all happened too fast. So he did bottom tick the airlines. That's true. Another curiosity. Um, but there just weren't values created. There weren't distressed companies. Policy came in and did Berkshire's job for it. You could argue that's what policy should sure, do. That's but, a whole other conversation. But look, so you, I don't think that people you, you looking say, at Berkshire can look at it the same way. No, but but you you have to pay attention, Josh, to the 13F, and you must want to know what he owns. How can you not want to know that or declare it irrelevant if you own Berkshire Hathaway stock? No, 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 no. If you own Berkshire Hathaway stock, of course, of course. But even then, like, what are you, what are you going to argue with them? But I'm saying the 13F used to be relevant for tens of millions of investors because they would try to glean from it. So my, I'll give you a great example. During the dot-com bubble, Warren Buffett was buying housing stocks. You know what he was doing? He was, in doing that, he was positioning himself for the next uh, bubble that we would soon have a couple of years later. He was buying aluminum siding, carpeting companies, companies that uh, built homes. That's how he spent that period of time in 2000 while everyone else was chasing fiber optics and, and, and dot-com stuff. Um, so he's always been uh, ahead of the curve. He's always been on to the next thing. This time he wasn't. And I, I really don't think there's any signal for non-Berkshire shareholders to take away from any of his buys and sells. They, he bought uh, Barrick Gold uh, in one quarter and sold it the next quarter. All right, reform broker, what's your call here? Uh, Berkshire, Berkshire, yeah, Berkshire is not done going up. Uh, I think the stock works for a lot of reasons. Staying long. Today is Wednesday, March 10th, and this is a post-market review for the stock market activities today. We started the day anticipating the macro data regarding inflation, specifically the core CPI. And I warned you yesterday that a lot of cooking will be involved in producing these numbers. Hey, how do you like yours? Red. Medium red. Medium red. Hmm, aristocrats. And indeed, they grilled these numbers to well done. And it was almost comical. They didn't even attempt to hide the fact that the numbers are cooked. It was absolutely disgraceful because we have all the facts that don't align with the numbers provided by the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the Federal Reserve. Once again, their method of combating the problem regarding the rise of inflation expectations is lie, deceive, distort, and distract from the issue. 
and just cross your fingers and hope that the market will forget about it. And it is all done to prop up the stock market. Here it is. Stock futures jump after report shows tame inflation. Dow futures climb 200 points. And of course, they give instructions to their media dogs to go out there with the misinformation campaign. But the markets, at least in the Nasdaq's case, reversed all of the gains and managed to close in the red. And you saw the names that rallied yesterday. The growth slash momentum names giving up some of the gains and not being able to build on the big gains from yesterday even though the propaganda was successful in pushing treasury yields lower so the big question is has the market moved on from worrying about the rise in treasury yields and now it is actually reflecting on valuations in the market in general meaning that even if yields remain stable and trend lower Perhaps we will continue to see technology and growth names being sold off or at least lagging the broader market. And the reason is that perhaps the rise of yields was the spark to trigger the shift in sentiment, where at least institutional investors and some retail investors are now reflecting on the valuations of certain names in their portfolios and they're deciding to rotate out of these names that remains to be seen we need to see how this week will close if we see the yields are trending lower meanwhile the technology names specifically the high growth ones high multiple ones remain lagging the market perhaps we're seeing a confirmation here that regardless of the rise of yields the growth era is over and the quote-unquote value slash inflationary trade is in the driver's seat right now. And of course, the other thing we received today beside the Fugazi CPI data that impacted the yields lower is the 10-year treasury auction. And the auction was worse than expected in certain areas, but the take here is that Japanese buyers were heavily interested in buying the auction. And that was good enough to push yields slightly, keyword slightly, lower. We'll cover that and a lot more during the headlines of the day segment. And today we have a new bonus segment called Clowning with Dan Ivis of Wedbush. With that being said, I got a market to cover and here we go. The Dow Industrial Average closing in the green by 464.28 points or a gain of 1.46 percent the nasdaq in the red down by about five points or decline of 0.04 percent the s p 500 in the green by 23.73 or excuse me 23.37 points or a gain of 0.60 percent and what about the sector's performance leading the pack and back at number one capturing the gold medal energy at number two for the silver medal financials, and at number three for the bronze, industrials. The laggards of the day led by technology, consumer cyclicals, and communication services. And we are back to the same theme from the last couple of weeks. And the question is, was yesterday yet again a one-day wonder? Or will it be followed by more selling in the technology and the growth side of the market? Or did we see the selling dry up? specifically in anticipation of the new stimmy checks to hit the market. That is the million dollars question. Moving on to the futures market and let's see what happened today. Bouncing back crude oil, WTI, Brent all climbing by about 1% or so. What about softs? Gains across the board led by OJ, Coca, Cotton, Sugar and Coffee Futures. Lumber Futures, the laggards of the day declining by about half a percent or so. And what about metals? Gains across the board, platinum and copper rejoining the party and closing in the green once again, along with gold, silver and palladium. What about meats? A resumption of the gains for lean hogs. Meanwhile, we saw modest declines for live cattle and feeder cattle 
futures. We saw a lot of pain here for grains futures. And we have news regarding the farmers because the new stimulus bill includes more aid for farmers. Remember, the market is getting white hot for the farmers. It's the best market they've ever had in years. In addition, some of the socialist programs of handing farmers checks every month are still here from the previous Goldman Sachs administration. In addition, now they will receive a new round of stimulus. And the assumption here from the market is the more money the farmers will help them increase the supply and combat the inflationary fears. And right away, we saw declines across the board here for grains, futures, whether we're talking about soybeans, soybean meal, corn, wheat, rough rice, oats, canola, soybean oil all declining some futures with notable declines such as canola corn soybean meal soybeans all declining by more than two percent or so <music> moving on to the big casino, the options market, let's see what's going on here. Finishing up at number one and leading the pack, Apple, with a little over 650,000 contracts, about 73% of those were calls. And at number two, AMC, with about half a million contracts, about 75% of those were calls. And at number three, Neo, with a little over 400,000 contracts, about 73% of those were calls. Tesla, not even on the board and we are seeing that options volume dried up a lot today no action whatsoever and of course uh, market makers the likes of goldman sachs and morgan stanley cannot wait for the new stimmy checks to revive the action in the options market wait for the call options buying mania that is about to hit the market from the stimmy checks 1400 bucks a piece can buy a lot of calls and this is exactly what they're gonna do the question is what are they gonna buy are they gonna buy the dip in the beaten down technology names and growth momentum names or will they buy oil cyclicals reopening names meme names who the hell knows but a massive storm is about to flood the options market and what about the interesting trades that took place in the options market today starting with the ticker gm for you guessed it gm we saw a lot of call options buying for general motors and this trade is no different because they're buying the 65 calls expiring april 1st with expectations that gm will gain over 14 percent by then and they paid 75 cents a piece to enter this trade bringing the total to about one and a half million dollars what about the ticker iwn this is for the russell value etf massive bets for an upside in this name in this case they're buying the 180 calls expiration date april 16th with expectations that the name will gain over nine percent by then and they paid about three bucks a piece to enter this trade bringing the total to about four million dollars and what about the gamestop mania what a ride it was today up 40 percent and then going down negative before closing almost flat here we have a massive bid a bearish one because they're buying the 250 puts expiration date this upcoming Friday with expectations that GameStop will decline over 6% by then and they paid big bucks for it about 25 bucks a piece bringing the total to about 17 million dollars 17 million dollars on the line with only two days before expiration and you are telling me that we have a problem of needing more stimulus checks where the hell are they getting this money to gamble with 17 million dollars here's another interesting trade for the ticker t wtr this is for twitter and uh, twitter caught a massive beating the last few weeks and in this channel we called the top in twitter and the reversal and that particular trade for twitter is up over one thousand percent and somebody's betting here that the bottom is here because they're buying the 69 calls expiration date march 19th with expectations that twitter will gain over six and a half percent by then and they paid about a buck a piece to enter this trade which brought the total all the way to about six hundred thousand dollars here's another interesting trade for the ticker fb facebook and they're buying calls facebook has been resilient throughout the whole sell-off 
because Facebook is somewhat of a value name when you pin it next to Apple, Microsoft, etc. And in this case, they're betting on more upside for Facebook by buying the 320 calls expiration date May 21st, with expectations that the name will gain over 21% by then, and they paid about two bucks 80 cents a piece to enter the trade, bringing the total all the way to 1.4 million dollars. And what about this trade for the ticker team? This is for Atlassian, a software name, and software names been hammered severely the last couple of weeks, and somebody's picking a bottom here, at least for this particular name. By buying the 240 calls expiration date, April 16th, with expectations that the name will gain over 13% by then, they paid about 13 bucks and 70 cents a piece to enter the trade, bringing the total to about five and a half million dollars. Continuing with interesting trades, what about the ticker ARKK for ARK Invest? Somebody's bidding for a resumption of the pain here by buying the 105 puts expiration date April 1st with expectations that the name will decline over 13% by then and they paid 3 bucks and 20 cents a piece to enter the trade bringing the total to about 1.2 million dollars and lastly what about the ticker BIDU for Baidu massive bet to the upside here by buying the 270 calls expiration date April 16th with expectations that Baidu will climb over 6% by then and they paid about 16 bucks and a half a piece to enter this trade bringing the total to about five and a half million dollars moving on to the headlines that shape the day starting with macro news and oh was the kitchen busy last night busy 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 cooking the cpi core inflation number here it is february cpi in line with expectations at 1.7 percent year over year versus 1.4 percent in the prior months core slightly less than expected at 1.3 versus 1.4 the estimate in the prior month and of course right away the future started to rally higher but eventually the market caught up to the lie and the cooking because it tasted a little too sweet and here are the facts and of course the bureau didn't even attempt to hide the fact that they were cooking the number here it is food prices are exploding they make up the bulk of lower income spending baskets how does the bureau of labor statistics cover this up here's an idea just ignore the actual prices and say they were temporarily unavailable they're not even attempting to hide the cooking what a disgrace while the un word food price index reaching highs we have not seen in years the bureau knowing that if they release the real numbers they won't be able to cook the number anymore so they did a cute trick here by saying oh the numbers were not were not available for the report magically it was more the case chiller has home prices at 10 year high yet the cpi says home price inflation is at 10 year low not high low i wonder who one should believe oh and the bls effectively admitted the cpi number from february was partially made up you cannot make this shit up they're making it up this is third world country kind of stuff oh and i want to hear from the morons who keep telling me oh stop saying the numbers are cooked you conspiracy theorists what is this you donkey what is this the facts are right in front of you the bureau of labor statistics partially admitting that they cooked the number what more evidence do you need latest cpa data tell me just one good or service that is up 1.7 percent in the last 12 months and i will throw 50 others that shot up at least 10 percent right back at you more of exposing the bullshit cake that was cooked overnight by the bureau of labor statistics and the federal reserve the bls said used car prices fell 0.9 percent months over month and are up 9.3 percent year over year in february meanwhile here's the true number manheim's used car price index last week for february said prices were up 3.8 percent month over month and 18 percent year over year oh inflation where is it i can't see inflation anywhere the federal reserve told me there is no inflation Papa Jerome told me, remember? Papa Jerome who just stabbed you in the ass? He's telling you that there is no inflation to be found. And here is the disclaimer. 
from the Bureau of Labor Statistics regarding the meal they cooked in the morning. Data collection by personal visit for the Consumer Price Index CPI program has been suspended since March 16, 2020. When possible, data normally collected by personal visit were collected either online or by phone. Additionally, data collection in February was affected by the temporary closing or limited operations of certain types of establishments. And therefore, we were not able to visit strip clubs. These factors resulted in an increase in the number of prices considered temporarily unavailable and imputed. We called the numbers and they were unavailable to comment. While the CPI program attempted to collect as much data as possible, many indices are based on smaller amounts of collected prices than usual. And a smaller number of indices that are normally published were not published this month. Meaning, oops, we did it again. Because our overlord over at Wall Street are stuck in the technology stocks. And they don't like to see their stocks going down. And we have to pump the market for them to give them an opportunity to exit at better prices. They're not even attempting to hide the fact that the numbers were cooked. Don't put too many onions. And of course, here it is. This is what Wall Street wanted and Wall Street got. The biggest concern that the markets have had over the last month or so has been inflation, running hotter than we estimate. Clearly, CPI puts that to rest, at least for today, said Art Hogan of National Securities. The yield on the 10-year yield has ceased going parabolic. Mission accomplished for now. Keyword for now. Manipulate, deceive, distort, and distract. This is the motto of the Federal Reserve and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Meanwhile, here is the reality. And this is why even babies, toddlers, would have caught up the fact that these numbers were cooked. The U.S. inflation versus ISM prices paid. Very high degree of correlation, historically speaking. But magically, this time around, they're not correlating because somebody is pushing those inflation numbers artificially down. But the truth will come sooner or later. And of course, we live in a world where you can trust the Chinese Communist Party numbers over the Federal Reserve and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Even China's numbers are more believable than the numbers we have. Even China is ashamed of cooking the numbers and they're letting reality show up. Just in, China's producer prices rise at the fastest pace in more than two years in February, fueled by surging commodity costs. Every single country, every single country on the planet is showing high inflation data. Magically, the United States is an exception. Do we really believe this garbage, this bullshit? But we are living in a propaganda regime. A complete mind control, a complete freak show that puts North Korea's freak show to shame. Even North Korea would not have the audacity of cooking the numbers this way and not even attempt to hide it at all. Even a baby can spot that these numbers are cooked. And by the way, what's going on in reality? Inflation expectations surging higher and we are already seeing interest rates climbing higher regardless of the propaganda from the government and the federal reserve refinance activity slows as mortgage rates jump the mba mortgage reports that the average 30-year rate rose to 3.26 percent last week the highest reading since july 2020 overall mortgage applications fell by 1.3 percent in the week ending march 5th oh but there is no inflation inflation is like john cena you can't see it anywhere you know who's seeing inflation farmers and it is very good to them good to the farmers not so good for the average american household who is getting choked to death by the rise in commodities and specifically food prices following a ceasefire between the world's two largest economies last year u.s farmers are shipping record volumes of crops and meats across the pacific and this is what farmers needed the goldman sachs administration under the leadership of uh, agent orange decided to turn farmers into venezuela by handing farmers monthly checks instead 
of giving them a market to sell their products to. And now we have the BlackRock administration whose solution is open up the tsunami and the floodgates of cash all over the place. Farmers, they're getting the welfare checks and they have hot market and they're getting new round of stimmy. Let's blow up this economy with more and more and more until the whole thing explodes on our faces. Oh, and by the way, don't worry. The stimmy is gonna arrive at rapid speed. So if you're uh, rubbing your hands, waiting to buy the dip, don't worry, a new fresh 1400 bucks is about to hit your bank account and you can speed that process up by giving the IRS your Robinhood account instead of your bank account. And the 1400 bucks will show up directly in your Robinhood account so you can blow it up right away by buying call options out of the money expiring that particular day. And then what happens when you lose the money? More, more, give us more. Federal government, more. And if that is the solution, by the way, just print, print, and print all the way to oblivion. Why do we have to work? Just cancel work altogether. We'll sit at home, we'll open Robinhood accounts, only fans accounts and we get to receive a monthly ubi from the government why do we even need taxes just cancel taxes altogether and just print any cash the country needs let's build new bridges highways railways spaceships dams hospitals airports and who cares who cares apparently there are no consequences whatsoever to racking trillions of dollars of debt and there are no consequences whatsoever regarding inflation, according to the quote-unquote experts. You can print trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions, and there won't be any inflation to be found. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said her department is preparing to send out stimulus aid as rapidly as possible once Congress passes the bill. And here it is. Drum rolls. Breaking. House passes 1.9 trillion relief. COVID relief bill sends it to Biden to sign. And I believe that it's already signed and the stimmies are on the way, baby. And here it is. Moving on to sentiment news. But we're still talking about the stimmy. A significant portion of the soon-to-be mailed stimulus checks could go toward buying U.S. equities. A douchebag bank survey of retail investors found that about $150 billion or 37 of the direct payments could flow into stocks. Certainly this $1.9 trillion is urgently needed in the economy and we have to send those checks rapidly according to Janet Yellen. Meanwhile, about 37% will go into buying stocks. And of course, we know why they want the bill to pass rapidly. The STEMI checks are just a portion, a small portion of the stimulus bill. The larger portion has a lot of funny stuff in it. And magically, somehow every round of stimulus includes more money to organizations that don't need the money, such as the Smithsonian Museum, Harvard, and other satanic organizations. But uh, don't get too excited here about the STEMI checks rubbing your hands, waiting to stampede, put your blindfold on, Naruto style, heads first, buying call options. Because perhaps this time around, those stimmy checks will go as fast as they were collected. And the reason is universal alignments, parallels, karma, whatever you want to call it. With a bit of an uptick courtesy of yesterday's moves, Nasdaq 100 relative, to the S&P 500 ratio is now at the same level as the peak. Interestingly, that peak was March 10th. Ooh, creepy. But perhaps this time around, the stimmy checks will fail to save the markets. And Robin Hood will be the biggest sinkhole to transfer that wealth, the $150 billion, from the pockets of average Americans, some need some don't need the stimmy into the pockets of Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and JP Morgan. $150 billion. So once again, where are you going to spend your stimmy checks? Which companies, which sector of the market are you going to buy call options on? Or did you say SPAC? SPACs? Is that what you're saying? Here it is. It's never a good idea to invest in a SPAC just because someone's famous is involved. Our new investor alert breaks down why 
all of a sudden the SEC has been awakened from its coma. Okay, so SPACs are not good. Where should we spend the money? Where should we buy call options this time around? How about the laggards, the stay-at-home names that got beaten down significantly? What about Zoom? Let's buy call options on Zoom. Here it is. Zoom founder Eric Wan transfers $6 billion worth of shares. Eric Wan, chief executive officer of Zoom Video Communications donated more than a third of his stake in the company filings show. Oh wow, he must be very generous. One gifted almost 18 million shares of the conferencing technology firm last week. The filings did not specify the recipient of the stock, which was owned by Granter Retain Annuity Trust or GRAT, for which one is a trustee. The shares were valued at about $6 billion based on Friday's closing price. So the CEO of Zoom is dumping like there is no tomorrow. And he's gifting shares and using cute tricks by establishing a trust and then gifting those shares to the trust that he magically has no connections whatsoever with. And the money magically finds its way to the pockets of Zoom's CEO anyways. Yet following this route comes with less to no taxes. Bingo. Okay, so we're not using the stimmy checks to buy SPACs or Zoom. So where else? How about meme stocks? What about GameStop? Should we buy call options on GameStop? Here it is. GameStop surges 40% then wipes out gain completely and is halted again. Do you want to be in this storm? Obviously not. So where should we deploy the stimmy checks? Hmm. What about junk bonds? Remember the junk bond mania? Here it is. The biggest US junk bond ETF has seen more than $2 billion worth of withdrawals in the past week, with its assets at the lowest now since last May. Where else are we gonna deploy these STEMI checks? You tell me. Are you gonna buy the dip in the beaten down technology names? Are you gonna buy oil stocks? Gold? Bitcoin? What are you gonna buy? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and uh, remember David Tepper, who colluded with the Federal Reserve, who failed two weeks in a row doing a propaganda tour to push yields lower. And uh, Mr. Tepper came over at CNBC on Monday attempting to prop up the market higher by saying this. David Tepper says that it is very difficult to be bearish on stocks right now. Here is why. And he talks about the rise in yields reaching a top. And now it is time to buy the dip. Now we know that that call blew up in the face of David Tepper and the market slided lower anyways. So here it is, doing a 180 today. David Tepper, stimulus money will leak into both the stock and bond markets next week. And he's saying that to point out the yields are actually going to go higher now with the new STEMI money because inflation expectations will rise higher. Well, Mr. Tepper, you didn't know that on Monday when you tried to prop up the market? Of course you did. But now you're trying to save face because you're looking like an asshat right now. Moving on to corporate-specific news, starting with American Airlines. And American Airlines been milking this mania for all of its worth, raising so much money, and they're using the money for what? Executive bonuses and share buybacks. You wait for it. Once they're allowed to use it for shares buybacks, they will go all in Naruto style, not giving a damn about the taxpayer money whatsoever. American Airlines borrows $10 billion in the biggest ever debt sale for an airline. And what about Apple and the iMob? Apple reportedly plans iPhone production cuts, but analyst, analyst, quote unquote, says recent stock sell-off is a golden buying opportunity. And can you guess who this analyst is? Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the dumbest man on Wall Street. And here he is, Dan Ives of Wedbush. And uh, if you're not familiar with Dan Ives, he's one of those analysts, quote-unquote analysts, the likes of Tom Lee, etc., who are hyper bullish and they continue to make an ass out of themselves raising price targets to cartoonish levels and making insane, wild, and childish 
predictions. And in the case of Apple, clown Dan Ives keeps saying that we are in a quote-unquote super cycle and millions and millions of people will upgrade their iPhone equipment in anticipation of 5G super cycle. Yeah, this is a masterpiece quarter. I mean, th that's an iPhone number that was not even in the best case scenario. You combine what we're seeing, double-digit growth in, in this pandemic, it just shows the super cycle, the hype was there. The stock's obviously run. Now it's a reality. I believe we could be looking at 240, 250 million units for the year. And I think this is a sweep the leg moment for the bears. I think ultimately this really throws out the negative thesis, if there was any on Apple. It's a real cycle. China continues to fuel on iPhones as well as services. It's a re-rating story still halfway through. Oh, the iPhone is super cycle. Apple is a super cycle. Super cycle everything. The universe is super cycling and a super cycle. What an asshat this guy is. And let's go on and review some of the greatest calls by Clown. Dan Ives. Here it is. Apple could lose nearly a third of its profit if China retaliated by banning its products. GS analysts. Dan Ives of Wedbush said 3 to 5% of iPhone sales in China may disappear over the next 12 to 18 months because of the US ban on Huawei. And surprise, surprise, less than 18 months later, here is the same Dan Ives. Apple stock could hit 600 bucks. One analyst explains why. And here is the latest from Dan Ives. Apple bull Dan Ives thinks the iPhone maker's market cap will rise to 3 trillion in the near future. It is currently at 2 trillion. Why? Doesn't matter. It's all about the super thankful. And here he is with Tesla. Tesla's new 950 bucks stock price target at Whitbush is the highest on Wall Street, but the analyst still won't say bye, okay? And uh, here he is a few months later. Tesla shares could hit 1,250 bucks in a best case scenario from about 845 bucks now, with Bush Securities Dan Ives says. And then he went bananas all together and started to sound very cartoonish. Tesla stock upgraded to 3,000 500 bucks by Whitbush. Whitbush analyst Dan Ives. Tesla will hit a trillion dollar market cap, 1,042 bucks a share in 2021. Despite this risk off moment for EV stocks, with the bears coming back to life after a long hibernation in their caves over the past year. And of course, he gives bullshit reasons to justify his cartoonish price targets, robo-taxis, China sales, super cycle, doesn't matter. Whitbush has had a neutral rating on Tesla, all the way up while raising price targets. CNBC and Bloomberg fawn over Dan Ives, serial price raiser, be better. And of course, one of his thesis of pushing Tesla's price target to cartoonish levels is the sales in China. Here it is. Tesla unit sales in China continue to struggle. The Model 3 enjoyed explosive growth in November-December on the shoulders of an 8% cut in October. But in January and February, Model 3 sales dipped lower, completely falling off a cliff. Not that it really matters, but it genuinely surprises me what a crook Dan Ives, the Whitbush guy, is regarding Tesla. Pretending those awful January and February China sales were quote-unquote good and quote-unquote above expectations. No one thought the Model Y intro would make January and February worse than November and December. But that doesn't matter for Dan Ives. And here he is with Nikola. Nikola got its first sell rating today by Wedbush analyst Dan Ives, saying there's a lot more risk than benefits here. It is going to be very turbulent ride. And this is after the stock lost 80% of its value, right after the Hinderberg research. And then Dan Ives decided to downgrade the stock. What a clown. And then he goes on and says, QuantumScape is the poster child stock of EV mania and Tesla isn't bullshitter and here are some of the price targets from Dan Ives. Lyft with a buy rating the price target is 72 with 16.7% upside. Apple for example 175. Salesforce 
300, Tesla 950, DocuSign 300, Microsoft 300. Just pull numbers out of your ass. And who cares? Pick the highest numbers to make the headlines. And the morons over at CNBC and Bloomberg reward this clown by giving him interviews. Moving on to the heat map analysis. And let's see what happened today. A reversal of the reversal. We're back to rewarding the inflationary trade. Banks up, energy up, industrials up, materials up, consumer defensives, all the value names, even within technology, IBM, Cisco, VMware, Oracle managed to outperform before sliding lower and Oracle had earnings after hours. But the point to illustrate here is that the selling dried out at least for today. So what is the message here? Is it that the selling is already done and we're just waiting and waiting for the stimmy checks to launch this market significantly higher once again? Or that the market had every condition today to rally, specifically regarding treasury yields. And when I talk about the market, I'm talking about the NASDAQ technology and growth names yields went lower why didn't the nasdaq rally higher why did the inflationary trade catch a bid instead isn't this a sign that more selling is likely to follow before the stimulus creates a floor and pushes the market higher at least for that particular week once again we revisit the same question from the intro are we starting to realize that this is not about the rise in yields in particular, but rather a change in sentiment regarding high multiple names, where investors are looking at their portfolios and realizing that the rising rates were just a wake-up call to review these very high multiple names in your portfolio and perhaps take profits off the table. Because regardless, we have more stimulus coming in, meaning more inflation and yields might as well continue to trade higher even if they retreat in the short term. But let's try to solve the mystery and piece the pieces of the puzzle all together by looking at the themes analysis. Starting with the nostalgia names, the reopening names. Mixed picture here, some declines, modest declines, but all in all catching a very minor bid. Now what about the inflationary trade? Back in the green baby, catching a bid. Massive gains, specifically for certain names. Boeing, up over 6%. Alcoa, another 6% or so. This name has been on fire. Banks up, Walmart up, Martin Moretta up over 2.5%. Hubble, back in the green. Even New Mount, gold, up about 4%. So the inflationary trade catching a bid once again. Was it a one-day wonder to fix the oversold conditions in the deflationary trade and now we're back at what we've been doing the last few weeks because here is what the deflationary trade looks like sizable declines but not as noticeable as say the beginning of the week or even last week yet the theme is very clear the inflationary trade back in the driver's seat once again but the big question is are we gonna play this yo-yo game shifting back and forth back and forth or is there a consistent theme here and if there is a consistent theme this will mean that the inflationary trade will continue to outperform meanwhile there is more pain for the deflationary trade this is where i lean to i lean to that there is more pain to come for the deflationary trade and high multiple names however you have to uncode the psychology of market participants because we have tens of billions of dollars about to flood the stock market next week we don't know where and which sector of the market market participants will use the stimmy checks to buy and this is why i'm asking you guys what are you buying i will continue to scour the internet and forums to figure out what will investors buy investors traders donkeys robin hoodie it doesn't matter what are they gonna buy because armed with tens of billions of dollars whatever they buy they will successfully manage to push these names higher at least for the short term moving on to the charts analysis, starting with the SPY, 15 minutes chart, gapping higher, and it's a grind higher throughout the day. We saw a minor sell-off in midday, but that was picked up right away. All in all, the SPY struggled to break above the resistance level of 391. And this is not the first time, by the way, the SPY struggles to break above 391. It failed once, failed twice, third time, and perhaps this is the fourth time. And if it is, then we have more selling here coming up for the SPY. 
But remember, the majority of the inflationary trade, banks, energy, materials, defensives, industrials, these sectors are outperforming and they're managing to push the SPY higher, even with the underperformance of technology. So the SPY will only decline if we see a wholesome sell-off in the market, where technology, the deflationary trade, and the inflationary trade get sold off for whatever reason do we even have a reason to sell off the market entirely that remains to be seen but we do have inflationary concerns regarding the new stimmy and therefore those of you who are betting against the market saying oh tesla is going to go down and therefore i'm buying the vix the uvxy whatever you're losing money and you don't understand why the vix is tracking the spy it is not tracking the nasdaq or the momentum names and therefore you're seeing the VIX trading lower. What's being beaten up right now is the technology sector. So if you want to bet against technology, you buy the S triple Qs. But understand that that inverse index is highly leveraged, meaning it moves three times the velocity of the move in the Qs. So you have to be careful and set your stops correctly. What about the daily chart for the S&P 500, the continuous contract? Any damage here? Not whatsoever closing above the yellow trend line closing above the very important support line of 3862 but once again i'm not going to bore you with it because i showed you over and over and over again the difference between the short-term picture and the long-term picture the weekly charts are suggesting a correction imminent in the spy you can kick the can down the road with stimmies or whatever but the correction is imminent in the spy as well remember these energy prices reopening names industrials deer etc these names also got out of whack look at the chart of goldman sachs a name that i own in my portfolio that name went bananas isn't it time for a pullback in goldman sachs at least I think it is and therefore you will see at some point the spy pulling back but it is not a guarantee that if the spy pulls back the nasdaq will outperform meaning a rotation what if everything sells off together we need a catalyst for that we don't have one right now moving on to the cues the nasdaq 15 minutes chart popping higher gapping overnight a massive pump operation with the fugazi cpi number but that failed right away and you saw the nasdaq the cues in this case back where 313 the same important level i talked about in yesterday's video and we struggled over and over and over again to break above it meaning the 313 is strong resistance and we are not ready yet to break above this number it will only happen via a very strong gap higher today we had a strong gap higher and even that didn't work so we need a stronger gap higher other than that the trajectory for the cues is lower not higher moving on to the daily chart Continuous contract stopping at the very important level of 12,766. We closed slightly above that. But once again, we had every reason, every tailwind to rally higher and try and attempt to recapture the purple trend line. That didn't happen. Why? Because we did four to five days worth of bouncing in yesterday's session alone. And I told you that is not healthy if you are bullish on the Nasdaq and calling a bottom. Bottoms happen as a process. This was not a process at all. Yesterday's action was just an indication that we're going to go back and forth in extreme volatility. Moving on to the IWM. 15 minutes chart. Recapturing the trend line. A series of bull flags pushing us higher and higher and higher. And the IWM is outperforming for multiple reasons. Number one, you have the reopening names included in the IWM. Number two, you have the YOLO stocks, the Wall Street bets kind of stocks, GameStop in particular, included in the IWM. So you continue to see the IWM outperforming, even though it is very extended and it is very ripe for a massive, massive correction. Zooming out to the daily chart, we're back at the channel once again. But can the IWM just continue to rally higher and higher and higher. Every time we see a dip, a mini correction, it is followed by a series of gapping higher and higher and higher. Because these zombies believe that every dip in the IWM is worthy of stampeding Naruto style buying the dip. At some point, they're going to get caught with their pants down. And this point is very, very close. Remember, we have lost a lot of momentum in the RSI. 
that is a very solid indicator that the IWM will have a correction imminent. And the correction is going to be very, very violent in this name. Let me show you in the weekly charts. We're doing a lot of repair here during this week. But look at how extended the IWM is since the March bottom of last year. Straight up higher. Very small, tiny pullbacks. And from a MACD perspective, it is extremely extremely overextended you can kick the can down the road all you want but the higher you're gonna go in the iwm the more violent the correction is gonna be the problem is you don't want to bet against the iwm right now until you see a clear signal of a shift of sentiment away from the reopening trade and then you will see a massive violent correction in this name and if i'm reading the tea leaves correctly we're buying the news here of the reopening, but once the reopening actually takes place, and we have an announcement, by the way, from uh, Joe Biden, a televised speech, I don't know what he's going to say, but if the market interprets that as the official announcement of the reopening of the economy, that could be the sell the news moment for the IWM. Moving on to the Dixie. The Dixie, once again, going lower. We talked about the reversal yesterday. And if the Dixie continues to trend lower, we will see the market shifting its character. For example, by rewarding gold. And you saw gold trading higher today. Here is the chart of gold. We have some wheels here to ride on from the level of 1675. Catching support. And perhaps that will be the beginning of a rally that would take us all the way back to the level of 1800. That would be resistance. And we will see how gold reacts at that point. But once again, a lot of people are saying, well, gold cannot rally with Bitcoin rallying higher. That is absolutely not true. And I told you yesterday, gold can rally along with Bitcoin if the dollar eases. And here is Bitcoin. What do we see here? I told you that Bitcoin has higher prices to go and it will perhaps make higher highs reaching all time highs once again the macd crossing is here the series of higher lows and higher highs is here the assumption is we're making a higher high and so far you gotta give it to the crypto maniacs because bitcoin held strongly against any inflationary fears and the route and the chaos we saw in the nasdaq Meaning that so far, Bitcoin passed the test. They hyped Bitcoin as a hedge against volatility and against inflation. So far, Bitcoin proven itself to be that hedge. Whether that is sustainable or not, that remains to be seen. But for now, Bitcoin is emboldening more confidence, saying, wait a minute here, if you're going to get your stimmy checks, because remember, everybody's now competing on the Stimmy checks. And Bitcoin is saying, are you going to buy the YOLO names, GameStop? Are you going to buy technology names? What are you, crazy? Look at me here, Bitcoin. I held strongly and steadily throughout the sell-off and the inflationary fears. I deserve the new 400, 400, 1400 Stimmy checks. It's a competition. Everybody's trying to get your 1400 bucks Stimmy checks. AMC wanted, Apple wants it, GameStop wants it. We'll see which name or which sector of the market will get the 1400 bucks. Once again, let me know. What are you going to do with your 1400 bucks? Moving on to yields. And here it is. Yields retreating lower. To where? Only to 1.53 once again. So after all of the cooking and the manipulation attempts, yields are barely dented which again solidify that perhaps yields are going to blast higher once again, and we will resume the sell-off in the NASDAQ. Moving on to the TLT. Here is the mystery, though. The TLT is extremely oversold, and it needs to bounce higher. At least this is what the MACD indicator is saying. But you got to use your head here. The technicals are saying TLT going higher, yields going lower. But the macro news, the new stimmy round is saying, inflation expectations will now surge higher meaning tlt will go lower and yields will continue to surge higher this is the conflicting points of view and you get a piece the puzzle together to figure out which one will be correct if you want to make a bet ahead of time understand that there is a degree of risk because you have no clue which one is going to trade higher yields or the tlt but you get to gather all the facts for example technicals say tlt going higher macro says Yields going higher. Now you get to combine all the rest of the information, the psychology, the options market, your interpretation of the auction today, the upcoming PPI data, all of that going to impact the movement one way or the other. If you're asking me, 
I have no clue. I'm just showing you what the technicals are saying. The technicals are saying TLT higher. The macro is saying yields higher, not the TLT. I lean toward yields going higher once again. And the reason is we just hit the system with another 1.9 trillion dollars so if you had inflationary fears before now you should have more but the question is is this already priced in or not for all of you tlt bulls think about that moving on to the vix what do we see here vix going lower crossing in the red territory in the macd making negative impressions in the histogram not looking good here for the v I x but remember the cup and handle formation remains intact until we cross below 22 everybody is very comfortable right now that they don't need to buy any protection against volatility whatsoever because the market is a split market technology going down but the spy going higher because financials industrials energy etc going higher so why do i need to buy the vix perhaps these traders are going to get caught with their pants down because what do you got to lose to have some insurance moving on to apple what do we see here in Apple? Remember, I always tell you, as Apple goes, so will the market, specifically the Nasdaq. Today, the Nasdaq was trading higher in the green. Meanwhile, Apple in the morning slipped back into the red. And I reminded you once again, as Apple goes, so will the Nasdaq. And you see Apple struggling here to hold support at the level of 120. Not a good formation here for Apple. We're not going to make a big deal out of it, closing below 120 just by about 3 cents. But once again, the weakness is very notable in Apple. And we are looking for the support level of 117 once again because we did not close between 120 and the next resistance level of 125. We closed closer to 120, hinting that we could go back and retest yet a lower level of support, in this case 117. When the chart has every tailwind to continue to move higher and it refuses to do so, that is usually the indicator that the chart wants to go lower to retest a lower level of support to get a confirmation before bouncing higher. If that support doesn't hold, that means the buyers are not there. And we just saw an algorithmic rebound, AKA a sucker's rally. And we're gonna go to the destination that I've been touting here, 113. And that one should hold. Moving on to Tesla, the souffle. What's going on with the souffle? We talked about the Fibonacci retracement levels and that held to the penny. I told you yesterday, the Fibonacci levels are showing 710, 720 as the resistance. And if you bought Tesla, you bought the dip, ride the wave higher until you get to 700, 710 and then exit. And if you listen to me, you did pretty good because Apple, Apple, Tesla reversed lower, closing below the Fibonacci retracement level, suggesting that Tesla could go back once again to 620, retest that level before attempting to bounce higher once again. But this is what I've been talking about yesterday. The massive bounce of 20% or so is not healthy. When you do 20% in one day, adding $100 billion in valuation in one day, you repaired a lot of the oversold conditions in the RSI already. And now you are ripe for a downfall once again. If you are a Tesla bull, you want to look for a gradual bottoming process, not 20% pump in one day. Oh, and here is uh, your homework, back by popular demand, Cleavage Lady. And the Cleavage Lady, of course, she had a bad call with Apple, but she is also very good in identifying resistance and support levels. What a genius. And she has another call for you. I'll let her explain, and then you do the homework and tell me if her call was correct or not. Big stock tips, talking to you about Twitter. Ticker symbol is TWTR. They went public in 2014 and hit an all-time high of 69. Over the last seven years, they went downwards and sideways until last week. They broke 69 and have an all-new high. Here's what the chart looks like. Okay, here is the chart. The top blue line represents the previous all-time high. My price target is 120, and if it has a closed price below 70, I would exit. Hope you guys have a great week. Trade at your own risk and make some money. And now, moving on to the conclusion of this video. What do we have in the economic calendar tomorrow? 
We have the initial jobless claims, the weekly jobless claims, per usual. And once again, good news is bad news for the market, specifically for the Nasdaq. If we get a hot number, that would contribute to more inflation expectations, higher yields, and that would be bad for the Nasdaq. I expect a better than expected number due to the reopenings, specifically bars. We saw more bars opening across the country. That should help the hiring process. What am I watching for the action tomorrow. Number one, I'm watching Apple 120. Can Apple hold 120 or not? That would be the first signal in the morning, whether we're gonna see weakness in the NASDAQ or not. Number two, we have Tesla at an important level of 675. Tesla closed below that level. Can it recapture 675 or will it gap down or get rejected once again and that would be a very bad signal indicating that tesla will decline at least to 620 and then i'm watching the triple q's 313 can we recapture that level tomorrow hold it as support or not i'm also watching the whole gamestop fiasco i'm not taking any decisions one way or the other just a big bag of popcorn and watching the show but the volatility in gamestop specifically spiking higher adds pressure on the indices overall specifically the nasdaq due to short covering reasons but mainly due to the concerns regarding the functioning of the market where we see massive moves up and down in gamestop market participants start to have concerns regarding the functioning of the market. So I am watching whether GameStop and other YOLO names will stabilize tomorrow or are we going to see the mania heat up, specifically in anticipation of a new round of STEMI checks. Will the STEMI checks go to meme stocks creating another mania? That remains the million dollars question. And once again, let me know in the comments, where are you going to spend your 1400 bucks STEMI checks? Which stocks are you going to buy? Which options are you going to buy? Anyways, that's all I got for you tonight and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.